The county executive makes a pitch for Blue Line Corridor funding. Good evening, this is CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. The Maryland Board of Public Works meets today the first time with its newest members, Governor Westmore and Comptroller Brooke Learman. On the agenda was a priority issue for Prince George's County Executive Angela Alsobrooks. She's seeking approval to spend the $400 million in bonds for sports and entertainment projects along the Blue Line Corridor. The Blue Line Corridor is the anchor initiative of our vision for economic growth and for good reason. By adding an amphitheater, a youth sports field house, library and cultural center, and other infrastructure improvements, the Blue Line Corridor will be the region's next big destination and Prince Georgians will have a wonderful new set of amenities to enjoy in their own backyard. And the board did approve $400 million for the project. Also, Brooks says the money will help create a world-class sports, entertainment, and cultural destination that draws people from all over. She says the county is also investing in projects along the Blue Line Corridor, including infrastructure improvements at metro stations and a state-of-the-art cancer center. Well, with the 445th General Assembly session underway in Annapolis, the Legislative Black Caucus announced its priorities for 2023. Members say the agenda was generated by lengthy discussions with voters around the state about what they thought was most important to them. We chose the issues that are of the highest importance to the black community in Maryland, and those areas are the cannabis legalization, education equity, housing, wealth issues, and also health. And within each of those areas, we have specific bills that we believe are impactful, that will help move the needle and advance the lives of Marylanders, um, black Marylanders all across the state. So in summary around health, for example, we are really excited to address cancer disparities. Mm -hmm. Black people are more likely than any other race to die as a result of cancer. And a lot of that is access to treatment and prognosis. And and Wilkins says two of their bills will deal with affordability and access to health care. Well, a fire breaks out in Lewisdale and displaces four residents. Officials say that that blaze happened at a home in the 2000 block of Woodbury Street late last night. When crews arrived, they found the home engulfed in flames. One firefighter and two adults were taken to the hospital for injuries. The Office of Emergency Management is helping the displaced residents. And we now know the names of the seniors who died in a Temple Hills fire over the weekend. The victims have been identified as 83-year-old Joyce Brown and 79-year-old Eunice Chisley. Last Saturday, authorities were alerted to a fire at an assisted living facility in the 5700 block of Center Drive. Brown and Chisley had been trapped inside. Both were pronounced dead on the scene. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. The state health department today reports 959 new COVID-19 cases. Seven Marylanders have died from the virus in the last 24 hours. 633 people are currently hospitalized with COVID-19. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. Coming up, local delegate Jazz Lewis is seeking equity in Maryland cannabis laws. We'll have details after the break. Stay with us. If this were the real COVID-19, I would be in real trouble, because I have asthma. And I have depression. I have diabetes. And I struggle with my weight. For us, COVID is a whole different ballgame. In fact, you could be one of almost 200 million Americans with a high risk factor. That makes COVID even riskier. Which is why you need to be ready. And have a plan. Other risk factors, including heart disease or being inactive. Even being over 50 or being a smoker can put you at serious risk. Could that be you? Find out. Go to noplangood.com and know your risk factors. Then make a plan. Because if you get COVID on top of asthma, like I did, the last thing you want to do is wait and see. Be ready. Have a plan. And ask your doctor about treatment options that may help. 
Welcome back. Well, test score results are in, and Maryland students made improvements in English but are struggling in math. Just yesterday, the state released the results of the Spring 2022 Maryland Comprehensive Assessment Program. The numbers show that Maryland students returned to pre-pandemic proficiency in English language arts. However, math proficiency dropped for students. The county school system had similar increases in English language arts but saw declining scores in math. And Delegate Alonzo Washington wants to bring an Office of Integrity and Compliance to the Prince George's County school system. The legislation would call for oversight of the CEO and school board. Both would be accountable to the new office, which would be independent. Washington says there is too much dysfunction with the current system. Two things that I always get from, from parents at the doors when I talk to them all the time is w the quality of education for our students, but also where's the money going and how is the money being spent. With this, with this, with this bill, if it passes both uh, houses, both chambers, we're going to have that independent office that will be able to tell us exactly how it's being spent, but also hold our school system accountable to how it's being spent in, this, in the school system. And if the measure passes, the director would be appointed by the county council. Well, Metro Station shutdowns are coming once again. Maintenance projects will shutter several Orange Line stations throughout the summer, including three in Prince George's. The projects include completing roofing, replacing steel rail that is susceptible to breakage, and installing fiber optic cable to improve communication. The 44-day shutdown will also span five Green Line stations from Fort Totten to Greenbelt. A veteran transit administrator is chosen by Governor Wes Moore to head the state's transportation system. 67-year-old Paul Wiedefeld served most recently as Metro's general manager. He also worked for years in various agencies under the Maryland Department of Transportation. The Baltimore native will have to deal with long-delayed and over-budget Purple Line and decide whether to proceed with former Governor Hogan's controversial proposal to widen the Capitol Beltway and Interstate 270. Now that Marylanders have voiced their support on the ballot for legalizing marijuana, what's next? Well, one Prince George's lawmaker wants to be sure equity is included in whatever new regulations are put forth. Delegate Jazz Lewis says he wants families who had relatives incarcerated to get the cash infusion needed to transform their neighborhoods. When we say equity, we're talking about the uh, erasure of records from people who've been incarcerated or uh, even if they've been released, it's been holding them back for a long time. We are talking about fair licensing so that people can get into the industry in multiple places, whether that's growing cannabis or processing it into another form or having some type of a retail shop um, or you know transporting it from place to place. We're also, when we speak of equity, you're talking about taxing and where the money goes. And we're, you know, we've dedicated at least 30% of it already from the bill last year to the communities of which I call disproportionately impacted, right? Those communities that bore the weight of the war on drugs. And Lewis says he wants those neighborhoods disproportionately impacted by past cannabis laws to become part of the conversation. He also wants other states to follow Maryland's lead for being a role model on equity issues. Well, Prince George's police are looking for clues in a Lanham homicide. The victim is 30-year-old Stephen Sollers. He was found yesterday morning in the 7700 block of Finns Lane, suffering from gunshot wounds. He was discovered in a wooded area and pronounced dead on the scene. A reward of $25,000 is being offered for information that leads to an arrest and indictment in this case. Still ahead here on CTV News, your Wednesday sports page. Stay with us. The American Cancer Society's Hope Lodge communities offer a free home away from home, closer to cancer care. People are meant to be together. Don't need to help keep it that way.
Hi everybody, welcome to the Wednesday Sports Page. We begin with the NBA. Despite being down a starter in Chris Stapp's Porzingis and Mavericks star Luka Doncic dropping 41 points, the Wizards still managed to win their third game in a row, 127-126. to A win to begin this five-game road trip is a good start for a Wizards team that has struggled away from home, going 8-16 and going into last night's game. Here's head coach Wes Unsell Jr. It's easy to you know get excited about one performance, and, and you know we got a long road trip ahead. So, um, but yeah, it could be a catalyst for something. You know, to, to be a little shorthanded, uh, be able to compete on the road. You know, an area in which we've struggled at times. But uh, this is a tough place to play, and um, you know, be able to come away with one is is terrific. The Wizards will stay in Texas as they go up against the Houston Rockets tonight at eight o'clock. Moving on to the Capitals, they weren't able to pull out a win as they fell to the Colorado Avalanche last night, 3-2. The Caps have now lost back-to-back -back games as well as five out of their last seven games. They're back on the ice tomorrow against the Pittsburgh Penguins. And to wrap up sports, the UMD men's basketball team will be in action tonight as they take on RV Wisconsin at 7 o'clock. And that is your Wednesday sports page. And now for your pet of the week, meet a different Simon. This one doesn't know a lot about sports, but he does know how to show a lot of love. Here we have Simon. Um, he is a three-year-old brown tabby, neutered male. He would be ready to go home to any family. He is very playful, cuddly. We love picking him up and getting cuddles. He's a big boy, so he is on the larger side for a cat, um, but he is very sweet, very loving. I think any family would do well for Simon. We haven't had him around kids, um, but you are more than welcome to, any family is more than welcome to bring their kids in and to meet him when they do their interaction with him. Um, they would come right into our cat mall where we are now and just make sure everyone's comfortable before going through with the adoption. And if you're interested in adopting Simon or any other pet, you can call 301-780-7200. And now let's get a check on your weather forecast tonight. Rain with a low of 38, winds as high as 23 miles per hour. Tomorrow and Friday, it'll be mostly sunny with temperatures ranging from the low 30s to mid 40s. Saturday, mostly sunny, highs around 51, lows near 34 degrees. And that is your CTV News for now. I'm Patricia Vallone. Have a great night and join us again tomorrow at 4.30. On the edge of the atmosphere The privilege of a lifetime is being who you are I'm going up, up, up out of here. My size, my hue, my age That's the only power I have as an artist Home is away. Being a woman is not about being brave or being strong It is just about giving yourself permission to be the things that you already are I absolutely would not be here if it weren't for the incredible women that have paved the way. We've been witnessing a movement. It's not only our job to entertain. Our job is to question what we depict, who we depict, and how we depict them. There's no such thing as just the wife. Nobody is just one thing. We are all, all the things. We will band together to make strides for equality. So to every little girl who feels unseen and unheard, we love you and we see you. Just like I see me. Thank you.